Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'd also like to give thanks and praise to my ancestors, those who have come before me, those whose names I know, and those whose names I do not know. So I've always had this fascination with the concept of manifestation. It always seemed kind of magical to me, kind of fuzzy though. And uh, there are some other terms that are somewhat similar that also intrigue me, like operationalization and implementation and demonstration even. And I think the reason these terms intrigue me is because they hint at a process of moving from the abstract, more intangible realm into a more concrete, somewhat physical space where people can see and smell and touch and bear witness to what was once just an idea. So thinking about social justice, I love Leanne Bell's definition of social justice as both a process and a goal. And I think I love it because it speaks to that vision for manifesting social justice. So Bell writes that the goal of social justice is full and equal participation of all groups in a society that is mutually shaped to meet their needs. The process for attaining social justice should be democratic, participatory, inclusive, affirming of human agency, and also affirming of human capacities for working collaboratively to create change. So that's a tall order, both in terms of the process and the goal. Um, and that's where this talk comes in, because I would offer that we can um, be reminded of opportunities to live social justice in our daily lives, and that gives us uh, opportunities for small victories, to celebrate our wins as we move toward those larger aims. So I would offer three um, practices that we could uh, utilize to kind of breathe life into our social justice work. Live with curiosity, seek coherence, and practice, practice, practice compassion. So living with curiosity for me is really about willingly and happily identifying those spaces where my values and the ways I'm thinking, speaking, acting, maybe there's a bit of a space. Maybe there's, rather than feeling shame or guilt that I'm not 100% all social justice all day, every day, through and through, um, seeing that as an opportunity when it does bubble up to my consciousness that I can change or maybe tweak my action or even my thoughts or how I speak so that I move closer to bringing my value for social justice into reality. So that's living with curiosity. Seeking coherence for me is about taking a holistic approach to how I structure my life and realizing that, again, even if my spiritual, my mental and my physical realms are not 100% in alignment, just setting the intention to seek coherence, to turn towards coherence, it strengthens me, it strengthens us as human beings. And in doing so, it strengthens our work. And in doing so, it strengthens the impact that we have on the people we work with and the communities that we partner with, regardless of what profession we're in or what field or subfield we work in. And even though it comes last, the third is actually the most important. The practice of compassion for me is very important because I consider myself to be a practitioner. I am a practitioner of this spiritual, organic spirituality that I've been developing my whole life. I'm a brand new practitioner of plant medicine, just starting to learn about the benefits of the, all the different plants that are growing around me. I am passionate about my teaching and my pedagogy, which I consider to be a practice, always retuning and refining and rethinking how I engage with my students and how we co-create our community. And so by seeing myself as a social justice um, practitioner, I think it opens up a space for me to recognize that I'm not perfect and my work will not be perfect and I can acknowledge my fears and my frailties and my missteps and my failures. And so practicing compassion with myself first means that I'm willing to 
take all of that in and hold it kind of with a, you know, with an open and generous heart so that I can nurture myself, so that I can be forgiving of myself. And I know that that's the only way I can offer true, authentic compassion and empathy for other people, which I see as foundational for a socially just world. So as I wrap up, I just want to touch on the role of joy and enthusiasm in our work. So I listened to this podcast called The Quote of the Day, and he gives a brief clip from different self-help talks um, that are longer talks that you can then go find online. So I was running the other day, and the quote of the day was focusing on raising your vibration and how that can then draw other people and processes to you at a higher level. And I was running and running with the question, how do I raise my vibration? Because again, I like the idea, but it felt kind of fuzzy. And I kept running and running, and as that runner's high kicked in, I had a realization. Running. <laughs> running is one of the ways that I raise my vibration. Music. My daughter's name is Ray. I love listening to her and watching her as she grows and develops and makes mistakes. Ray raises my vibration. Meditation raises my vibration. And I think another way of asking that question is, what brings me joy? So I would just like to take a moment and ask you to close your eyes and feel what comes up for you when I float that question, what brings me joy? It might be a what, it might be a where, it might be a who. What comes up for you? Can you call out some of the things that you're feeling? My son's laughter. Your son's laughter. Anyone else? Talking what? Talking story. Talking story. Maybe one more? Huh? Birds. Birds. So you all may be familiar with the quote by Sister Audre Lorde where she talks about self-care and she says, taking care of myself is not self-indulgence, it's self-preservation, which is an act of political warfare. I would offer that as we do the work of um, living with curiosity and seeking coherence and practicing compassion, it's our responsibility to allow our joy to infuse that work not as an act of self-indulgence, but as an act of political warfare, and because we have to realize that that's the only word, word, way that will create the socially just world that we want to live in. Thank you.